My name is uh, Dr. Johnson Mwangi. I am the lead dentist and the CEO at Tender Care Dental. I've been practicing dentistry for just a few years. Uh, the last 34 years. <laughs> I feel it's just like the other day. When you have missing teeth, it changes a lot of things. One, it affects your smile. And even if somebody may deny it, it does affect that at the subconscious level. And the way they used to present themselves, the way they used to smile, they actually somehow just change. Then the other one is that once you miss a tooth, the bone around the area the tooth has been removed, the bone shrinks. And it gets resolved both length and even height. It goes down. So what you find as people lose teeth, then because the teeth support the cheeks, then you find that then all the tissues just start wearing. And then you find the face is going small, they have dimples and that kind of thing. You have what we call a disuse atrophy. Primarily we have teeth to help us eat what we want to eat. But when you don't have teeth and you're missing some teeth, you are actually not eating what you should be eating. Then that goes to the whole system of the body and slowly, you find the general health of people who have lost their teeth. Their bodies weaken. I'm very passionate now about dental implants. Why? Because when I started dentistry, dental implants was not there. Especially in Kenya, we started doing implants probably in the last 10 years or so. So what is a dental implant? In a very simplified way, a titanium metal or a titanium screw, let's call it like a screw, which we put inside the bone and that screw it acts as the root of the missing tooth and then on top of that root or implant you'll come and place a crown now representing the normal teeth that we see so when you have a dental implant we will actually not see the implant itself because it is buried right inside the gum inside the bone so we will only see the replaced to the crown and people might not even tell that that's a natural tooth. You can have one implant, you're missing one tooth, we basically place that implant. You are missing multiple teeth in one place, we can place multiple individual implants and place individual crowns on them. Or let's say if you're having a gap of three missing teeth, we can place an implant on this tooth, on this tooth. We don't place an implant at the center, but then we do a bridge supported by the implants, okay? implants at the center? Because of cost, and it might not be necessary to put place all the implants. If you can place a few implants and still manage to replace the teeth that are missing, then you may not need to do all that. What about for people who are missing all the teeth? You know the people who traditionally we normally give dentures, the ones for placing like our grandparents who used to have dentures. If their bone was so much lost, those dentures keep falling. Now we are able to replace all the teeth in the mouth, also using implants. Sometimes we may place just the front four implants and even do a denture still, which is fixed. That's the goodness with this, it is fixed. The patient doesn't have to remove it or even do fixed bridges using the implants for the whole mouth. So when you come, we need to do some preliminary investigations. One, do a clinical examination, do some x-rays, and especially we like to do what we call a CBCT, a 3D x-ray, which shows us exactly how much bone is available in your jaws, because we need to have sufficient width of the bone, and we need to have sufficient height of the bone to be able to place the implant. Once we've consulted, we have taken the x-rays, we are satisfied that this is the size and the number of implants that you need, you will come in and we will drill the place that we want to place the implant. And then after that, we will put in the implant. Immediately after that, we place something called a healing collar or a healing abutment on the implant. That helps us to shape the gum around there so that eventually when we come to place the, the crown, the crown will appear like it is growing from inside the gum. Most of the time, we actually not put a crown immediately because you want that implant to become part of the body, for the bone to grow into the implant and for it to become stable enough to be able to support the chewing forces and that kind of thing. We'll normally give it three to four months. So we leave the implants there, three to four months. When it is what you call osseointegrated, it's integrated in the bone, 
we come, take an impression, and then send to the lab, and then the lab makes us a crown. The crown can either be cement retained or screw retained, in which case we, we just screw the crown into the implant. I prefer screw retained in uh, crowns because they are easier to remove, easier to change, or something like that. Most of the people should be able to get dental implants, but there are a few people we are unable to place implants for, for specific reasons. One is the highest on the list, people who smoke. The first two weeks, probably that implant will not even take. It will get infected. So unless you stop smoking like two weeks before, then you're willing to stop smoking again for a week or two after we place the implant, that's the only chance of uh, we could attempt to place an implant. The second one is um, people who have uncontrolled diabetes. You know, they are very susceptible to getting infections. So if the blood sugar is not well controlled, if you place an implant, their healing ability is low. But if somebody has diabetes and the blood sugar is well controlled, they are taking their medications, we will place the implants, we'll put them on antibiotics. But we have to keep on monitoring it because it can be affected depending on the way the sugars are going. Of course, there are some other health conditions. Let's say people who are getting uh, radiotherapy, uh, people who have got radiation, especially around the, the head and the neck, we will not place implants on them because already the radiation compromises the healing ability of the body. So it is not safe to place implants on such pe people. We would choose another different way of replacing their missing teeth. Then the other one is age, of course. Uh, we want to place implants when the growth of the jaw is complete. And therefore, we avoid, put, we don't put implants in children and teenagers. We place implants on people, especially above age 20 and above. On the upper limit, Lily, so long as somebody is healthy, even 70, 80 year olds, we will comfortably place their implants if their general health is, is, is good. It's good for me to mention that um, when you have lost teeth, there are various ways of replacing. The first one would be to have a denture where you have a plastic with some teeth attached to it. So it's removable. The other one is crown and bridge where if you have some teeth, adjacent teeth to the gap, you use those teeth to support uh, the missing teeth in between. That's why we're calling it a bridge. You crown this tooth, you crown this tooth, and then you support the missing teeth in between here. That was the really traditional way of doing it. Mm -hmm.